my talk is pretty uh, self-explanatory, and it's called Sexism in Gaming, a talk by a bearded man way out of his depth. Some jokes are funny because they are ludicrous and ridiculous, because they're silly, over the top. But some jokes are so true, they're not really funny at all. First of all, it's, I should point out parenthetically that it's very easy to be a man and criticize sexism on the internet. I know that. Uh, well, it's also very easy for a woman to do it. After all, many of them have made it their vocations. Some have made it their hobby. Some have made it their religion. Um, this is the year that gaming taught me just how much sexism pisses me off. I wasn't really aware of that until now, so thanks, gaming. Um, when you picture a gamer, uh, you're probably inevitably picturing what game development companies picture. You're picturing one of the following groups. I don't know. I think among game development companies, a lot of the times we see a detachment from reality. People want to sell things based on what they think people want instead of the things people actually do want. The revolutionary success of indie games especially and double A games that 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 cater to niche groups of gamers, I think proves this to a degree. Now, these guys are wearing shoes that have clearly never seen dirt. I mean, this family doesn't exist. Their haircuts are immaculate. They probably sleep in Ikea every night. But this is how Nintendo chooses to cater towards gaming. When they picture a gamer, this is who they picture, this weird nuclear family. Now Here's the thing about portraying a family of this nature. Do they exist? Certainly they do. However, it doesn't matter if they are real or if they are not. What matters is that people look at that image and they want it. That picture appeals to a broad variety of different people. Not just white, middle-class, married families with two kids. With a living room as sterile as surgical equipment. And glass walls that make privacy a pipe dream. When people see this ad, it doesn't matter if they exist or not. What matters is that it is something that people want. It is an idealized version of something that our culture has promoted. And this isn't going to talk about whether or not that's good or bad. This picture looks like an ad for the Wii. The Wii marketed itself very, very well, and it sold very well as a result. It marketed itself as something that would bring the family together for personal quality time. It was the gaming console for families, for everybody. Though not pictured here, a lot of the ads would have families standing up and doing jumping jacks or pretending to swing golf clubs or tennis rackets. It got you off the couch. It got you playing games with your kids. This ad is directed towards adults. This isn't an ad that's directed towards children. Now, I wasn't allowed to play video games when I was growing up. I had to go behind my parents' back, or I could only play them when I was away from home. But I did have three younger siblings. If I was to go to my parents' house right now, beneath a television set right next to the DVD, there would be the only video game system in the entire Domus. And that system is a Nintendo Wii. This is an ad that markets itself to people, mostly adults, who are not gamers, but who want to use games to bring the family together. And you may think this picture is silly, and in ways it absolutely is, but Nintendo used it, and it made them a lot of money. Now, the game you're probably picturing realistically is this one. Uh, <laughs> never get tired of looking at that face. Um, when you deal with sexism on the internet and it's coming in a gaming context, it's usually coming from this guy. Not always, but it's usually coming from this guy. But That's strange considering that this picture here represents somebody that for the most part doesn't exist. As most of you know, this is a picture of a character in a South Park episode that aired way back in 2006. The episode's name was Make Love, Not War, Craft. The episode was a satire on MMOs, as South Park is pretty much satire and social commentary on all things. But this gamer doesn't really exist. I mean, sure, you could go out and you could find some examples of people who might fit the bill fairly accurately, but you might have to search fairly hard. The player that this represents in the episode is a, a try-hard, no-life 
obsessive player, the likes of which are, well, relegated to satire. This is not a character that anyone strives to be. This character isn't something that anybody looks at and feels affection or attraction towards. He's the antagonist in the episode. Your claim that any forms of online video game sexism are usually coming from this guy, well, that kind of hurts your point considering people like this are extremely rare in the gaming scene. There might be some truth to that. Perhaps if you would have said something like, players who are very, very serious about games are more likely to insult women. Yeah, I would believe that. Because gamers who are really, really serious about games have a tendency to insult everyone more. Not just women. Studies that you find on this subject must always be taken with a grain of salt, though. For instance, one that is commonly cited was this study that was made in 2015. Insights into sexism. Male status and performance moderates female-directed hostile and amicable behavior. Basically, does your performance in a video game affect how you treat women in that video game? The study sample size and the fact that it only used a single game, Halo 3, plus, when you add to that, the fact that the creator of the survey is quoted as saying, if men have a hard time accepting that women are outperforming them in something, they will ensure that the women don't have the opportunity to compete in that venue. That's what you essentially see happening in Gamergate? And based on Kotaku in Action's analysis of this study, it's pretty obvious that this researcher is letting his biases get to him in the way he looks at what the numbers show and what players actually do. I'll link the Reddit thread in the description so you can read it. It's got a lot of info that might interest you if you're looking for more information on this subject. As for this guy here, this isn't something that gamers strive to be. This kind of person is normally looked down upon in video games, and especially in real life. It's a stereotype, and a negative one, because it's satirical in nature. But to claim just like that in a TED talk in front of a bunch of people who don't know what comedy is, that this is the source for female harassment in video games without telling us why or how you came to that conclusion, I don't know. It puts a bad taste in my mouth. Because I could just as easily slap a fedora on this guy and all of a sudden, he becomes a meme for white knights. Thankfully, a high rate of scurvy and bed, bed sores ensure they die quite quickly. Now, this guy... I hate the Big Bang Theory. Well, I'm pretty certain it doesn't think very highly of you. It's an insult to everything I hold dear, and frankly, the, see, everyone's looking at his eyes now, because the eyes, they're like the black eyes of a shark, so I'm just gonna solve... It's gonna be hard to talk without doing this, so... <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, problematically, the game developing communities tends to have, uh, basically, uh, they've, they see these as the atypical gamers, so they cater almost exclusively towards these, uh, these archetypal figures. And the one thing you may have noticed is that there's barely any females in the mix. You see of the images you showed us, a third of them are women. There are two in that first image that you showed us. And oddly enough, you said this family doesn't exist. You're the one who is suggesting that the two women that you've showed us aren't even real. Awfully dismissive, don't you think? The game development community has drifted towards that dangerous notion that maleness is the norm. Well, yeah, the majority of gamers who play hardcore video games are male. Maleness is the norm. That doesn't mean that alternatives to that are hated or despised. They're just less common. Just because something isn't represented as much doesn't mean it is being discriminated against. This is very, very important for people to realize. Just in terms of numbers, women don't seem to get into gamer culture as much as men do. And I would like now to kick that notion straight in the dick. You would permit me. All right. Notice how they're all clapping because he said punch in the dick. I'm very curious what they would have done if he said fuck it right in the pussy. You think they would have had the same reaction? Makes me wonder just what audience it is he's giving this little lecture to. Yeah, dicks. All right. Uh, so. Here we are, part two. How many gamers are women? Now, it's all well and good to say more women are gaming. And they are, but I'd like to give you some statistics. Uh, there was a big survey conducted... By the way, that cut was not me, that was Ted. Uh, there was a big survey conducted by the ESA last year, and as of last year, 47% of gamers are women. 
Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It is. It's, it's nice. Because what happens now is you start to put this anger in context. When the only anger in video games is the normal anger everyone gets to everybody because it's a competitive environment. To say that what you're saying, that men are just angry at women because they play video games, is completely unsubstantiated. Because, of course, even though everyone gets shit-talked and made fun of on the internet, when it's a woman being made fun of, now it's a gender issue. As Ashley Judd would say, it's a global gender rights crisis. The claim is that 47% of all gamers are female. Basically half. And as anybody who has ever played video games on consoles or on PCs can tell you, this is total and utter bollocks. It's an experiment you can try from the comfort of your home. Just keep a tally of how many men to women you ever communicate with in online games. I bet it would be upwards of nine males to a female. But I'm not presenting this anecdotal evidence as proof of the claim. I have gone into this before in previous videos. I won't reiterate the fine data points over again, but in surveys where they take numbers and get 40, 45, half of gamers are women, they include casual mobile games, phone games, because you have to to get these kinds of numbers. There's nothing wrong with women playing games. There's nothing wrong with men playing games. It doesn't matter what your gender is. But if you're trying to push the narrative that gamers are sexist, or video games are sexist, then it is much more persuasive to your argument if you stand up in front of a stage in front of a bunch of people who don't know what humor is and tell them half the people playing video games are women. So obviously half of the video game playing population is affected by this tragedy, this crisis, this gender-based humanitarian catastrophe. If only 10% of gamers were women, oh well, yeah, it would be unfortunate if there was sexism, but it would only affect 1 out of 10 people. But when half the people are affected, oh no, that, that's a call to arms. Surely we cannot sit idly by while half a community is being made fun of for their gender. Only in the most technical of senses can you consider a casual phone game like Bejeweled Candy Crush or Mobile Strike, now free on the App Store. Nah, my Schwarzenegger turned into a Jamaican. Anyway, it's a stretch to consider these in the same league of games as Call of Duty, Battlefield, Dota, Overwatch, things of that nature. We know that in terms of hardcore games, console games, PC games, males far outnumber females. I go into the numbers more in my Adam Ruins Everything video, but we've got a lot to cover so I won't focus too much on this. But basically, this claim is extremely misleading. It's very, very disingenuous when you look at these numbers, and presenting half the gamers in the context he's talking about, it's just not being fully honest with people. Male gamers rail against female gamers. You know, they're not a minority anymore. Paul, there are only two genders, male and female. If females are 47%, that makes them the minority, you douche canoe fool. And they start throwing around terms like girl gamer. You may have heard this online. A girl gamer is a, is a kind of weird term because girl carries with it connotations of uh, vulnerability and innocence and youth. Or no, no, it just, Paul, it just means a gamer who's a girl. You're looking way too deep into this. The norm of hardcore games, the games that most people who probably watch these videos of mine play, the norm is to be male. It is by far the majority. That's why, if you're referring to a gamer who is a girl, you say girl gamer. Whereas, in fact, women, like, women are playing video games now. My mom plays video games. Admittedly, I have to bribe her to do so, but she's playing them. Well, gosh, that's not very feminist of you. As for women who are playing games who are a little upwards in age, again, mostly mobile games, mostly casual games. The games you could play on your phone. The games you could play while you're watching the kids, while you're commuting on the train, while you're going to and from work. The kind of games you could pull out and just enjoy anywhere really quickly in small spurts. And the data that you can find on this is extremely misleading, and you have to really read through it. This Daily Dot article, adult women are now the largest demographic in gaming. That's odd. It says adult women are 38% of gamers and adult men are 35%. That's unusual, based on the games that sell the most, and who they're marketed to, and who we run into online. So how do they get these kinds of numbers? Well, they present a graph very shortly after the article begins. The average game player is 31 years old. What is a game player? We don't know. It's just this nebulous sort of term that can mean whatever it needs to be. 
That's why you can write an article and say half of gamers are women without defining what gamer is. Now the graph on the left is making the suggestion that 39% of all gamers are above the age of 36. And there are more than double the amount of women over 18 who play games than boys under 18. Again, these are pretty bold claims, and without setting up definitions as to who's a gamer and what kind of games they're using, it makes you scratch your head and wonder, how did they get these numbers? Well, the article very quickly states right after, and it's easy to see why. While the study didn't assess the age or gender demographics of specific games, the titles of the bestsellers attest to the diversity of the games themselves. Pokemon X, Final Fantasy XIV, NBA 2K14, Bioshock Infinite, World of Warcraft, Just Dance 2014. I mean, yeah, just look at the titles. Pokemon X, World of Warcraft, NBA 2K14. Yeah, just based on all these titles, we're pretty darn sure that 36% of gamers are women over 18. I mean, just look at the titles, right? But the fact that they so blatantly say, yeah, we didn't look into the demographics of games. That's why we're going to put Just Dance 2014 next to Final Fantasy 14. That's why we're going to put Pokemon X next to World of Warcraft and Bioshock Infinite. Because in order for us to publish the numbers that we want to see, Bejeweled has to be on the same level as Call of Duty. Whether you play Diablo or Pet Rescue, you can rest assured that you're in good company. I mean, never mind the fact that this is a backhanded slap against male gamers to say that you can rest assured that you're in good company, that we've told you a lot of them are women. I mean, aren't you happy to know that there are a lot of very nice people out there and they're nice just because they're females? Because, you know, if a boy plays a video game, he's toxic. But just a quote, Diablo, Pet Rescue, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, there's no difference. You go to The Guardian, you go to other places, the numbers will keep saying the same thing. I've gone into them before. You have to put Pet Rescue on the same level as Diablo in order to get the numbers that you want to push published. Uh, so what I want to talk about now is part three, Grand Theft Auto V, how I got involved, how much it sold, and what it actually is. Now, like I said before, I was never actively pro-sexism before, but you know how sometimes you form very strong opinions based on just how douchey the opposite of your opinions are? You know, I think a lot of people have watched this TED Talk, and they know exactly what you mean. So, when Grand Theft Auto V came out, people started talking very vocally about how sexist video games are in general. Yeah, because they're riding the wave of everyone talking about a game in order to make their voices louder and to try and make some sort of a difference, trying to slay a dragon that doesn't exist. Because in Grand Theft Auto, you do terribly, horribly violent things to women. And to men. But that means that it's sexist. I guess. And that's now, they, they drove me in the opposite direction, so I'm very grateful for that. But Grand Theft Auto V made a lot of money. Would you like to ha know how much money it made in three days? I'm just going to talk here so that TEDx doesn't claim this video like they did the first time I uploaded it. Good job, Ted. You're such, you're such a m Ideas worth sharing what? my asshole. Now, here, here, just as a quick backstory, I was going to do the voice and put the finger up and that, but I thought, that's not a current reference, no one wants to hear that. But then I forgot to take this slide out, so the joke's still in there, it's just crapper. Um, you were the physical incarnation of wit itself, Paul. Now, for those of you who don't know, Grand Theft Auto V is what we call a sandbox game. Uh, basically, the game environment is like a sandbox, except there's rarely dog poo in it. Um, sometimes there is. It wasn't me. I originally wasn't going to say something like that, but I had to talk here in this segment because TEDx claimed the video at this point and the one before, and I'm not going to give TEDx money for all my work. But these games boast choice. It's all about choice. You go into these game worlds and you are promised an infinite amount of possibilities. You can choose what to drive and what to wear and who to kill with certain vehicles, but you cannot choose not to be a sexist prick, which is an unfortunate uh, side effect. Let's move on to part four. That jump cut, by the way, that wasn't me. That was, that was Ted doing this. That wasn't me. I think it's very telling, though, that you have to explain to an audience what a sandbox game is. One would assume if you were speaking to an audience who knew anything about video games, you wouldn't have to explain to them that a sandbox game is what it is. And it concerns me that you are taking all these people who probably don't know much about video games, or you at least assume they do not, and fill their heads with nonsense. 
Basically, what you've done is told an entire crowd of people that Grand Theft Auto is about being sexist. You have said nothing about the satire or the hyperbole used in a lot of its characters. You have not talked about how a lot of it is jokes, making fun of popular culture, how it's social commentary. You've said nothing about how the characters are deep and well-developed and they have internal struggles that are legitimately interesting, how the protagonists really are fascinatingly well-written characters. You have said nothing along the lines of, oh, you probably kill way more men than women anyway, but you play as a sexist. You have taken a, probably a masterpiece of a game that is Grand Theft Auto V and distilled it down and shot out the summary to a crowd of people who probably don't know much about it that Grand Theft Auto is about being sexist. And it rubs me the wrong way how insanely disingenuous you are being, Paul. The GameSpot review Nightmare Factory, note, not an actual factory. Um... You know how many people laughed at that joke, Paul? Zero. No people did. Because your jokes are not funny. You're not a funny person. When a game like this comes out, every gaming publication just massively invested in getting big, fast, entertaining reviews out the door straight away. And GameSpot, a very fine publication... Paul, um, are you forgetting about review embargoes? Do you know what those are? Do you know anything about games journalism? I understand you don't know what comedy is, you don't know how to be honest, you don't know how to dress yourself properly. Why are we talking about video games journalism when you don't understand what the concept of video game embargoes are for reviews? Many, many, many games have what's called review embargoes. That means that when a company like Rockstar sends their game to video game journalists and news publications for them to do reviews on, they say, don't publish your review until this day. It's not illegal to breach the embargo necessarily, but it's normally considered to be done in poor taste and it ruins your relationship with the developers. They might not give you a game to review in the future if you break the embargo. It's like an NDA in a way. The idea is that they give these games, they say, all right, you have this amount of time to play our game because it is in the best interest of both the journalists and the news publications and for the sake of the reviewers and for the sake of the developers and even for the consumers to have this embargo in place. What do I mean by this? Well, hold, put down your pitchforks, I'll tell you why these are actually kind of good. Do you want a fast review, or do you want a good one? In order to get clicks, a lot of websites want to be the first person to break a story. This is all news media for the most part. If you're out, nobody else is, and people are going to go to you to get that information. So, let's say you're reviewing a video game. If you're reviewing a video game and you're the first to finish it and you're the first to power through and quickly get everything done and put your review online, you're going to get all those sweet, sweet clicks because you're the only person who's got all that info. Without embargoes, it would encourage people to beat games as quickly as possible and not explore the games to their fullest in order to make the most well-rounded reviews because it's all about getting it out first. Not necessarily even having a decent review or a good one or a thorough one or one that actually would inform the buyers and readers well. Embargoes, for the most part, ensure that these publications and all the reviewers have a decent amount of time to explore the game, get used to it, learn it, and get all their proverbial talking point ducks in a row for the reviews. Then the reviews are released pretty much in the same-ish time, which means that every reviewer has ample amount of time to explore the game fully and give the readers of that review the best impression. At least that's the general idea, and normally it works just fine. We get into the nitty gritty details of um, uh, how close the embargo is to the public release date of the game. If the review release date is one day before the game comes out, well, that's not as ideal as the review coming out three days or a week before the game releases. How ah, about the devils again in the details? Is this a huge point in terms of the TED Talk? No, but it's something I thought I would mention. Review embargoes can do a lot of good for everybody. Ideally, review embargoes are good. They can be ruined just like anything else, but you can listen to other YouTubers talk about them more in length if you want more info on them. GameSpot, a very fine publication, mm. gave the review to Carolyn Petit. And Carolyn does a seven minute video in which she basically heaps praise upon the game. I've never seen this many compliments in a game review. It's wonderful and it's articulate and it's, it's hitting the mark on every point. And halfway through, Carolyn says, maybe the game's a bit sexist and does a really good number on it and then calls the game politically muddled and profoundly misogynistic, a claim that, incidentally, I 100% agree with. 
Um, yeah, you do disagree, because like Carolyn, you're a fucking idiot. You, like Carolyn, are unable to keep your political opinions out of what is supposed to be an informative review of a video game. Let's start at the beginning of this travesty of verbal diarrhea you've just spewed onto all of our ears. This is Carolyn's review on GameSpot's YouTube channel of Grand Theft Auto V. You might notice, namely, the video is not exactly well-liked. And if you haven't had quite enough cancer for today, you can go to GameStop and read the full review itself in written format. It has quotes like GTA V has little room for women except to portray them as strippers, prostitutes, long-suffering wives, humorless girlfriends, and goofy New Age feminists we're meant to laugh at. Um, Carolyn, you're supposed to laugh at New Age feminists. In the summary of the game, you can even see under the bad it is politically muddled and profoundly misogynistic. Like the old saying goes, meteor strikes earth, women most affected. Reviewer can't satire. GTA is and always has been a satirical series that makes fun of overblown American tropes. Not glorifying them. You failed. Go back to middle school. What a joke review. Can you please not hire reviewers from Tumblr? Premising that I find the way people reacted against Carolyn to be absolutely awful and ignorant, I have to say I get annoyed when political agendas seep into reviews. If there was one thing that Grand Theft Auto has done, and done for about 15 years, is misrepresenting and caricaturizing everyone. Not just women, everyone. White men are depicted as neurotic, violent assholes. Black men are depicted as gangsta thugs. Asians are given 1940 stereotypes, and yes, Women are depicted as vapid, nagging bimbos. Complaining about women being misrepresented in a game where every single group or minority is intentionally misrepresented for social satire is like calling the rain sexist because it's getting women damp. So, you see, Paul, when you say things like... Halfway through, Carolyn says, maybe the game's a bit sexist. You're literally lying. That's not true. Let's look at Carolyn's review. Let's see how far she can go before she says something about sexism. Or perhaps you start by digging deep into the game's story problems, or its serious issues with women. From the time Carolyn's trap is opened, it takes 26 seconds for her to bring up sexism. 26 seconds. So the whole, uh, halfway through she mentions it might be sexist. No, Paul. She doesn't bring up that maybe the game is sexist halfway in the video. No, she starts off with it practically. Her GameSpot article on GameSpot has it as a highlighted quote. The review is still up on YouTube if you want to check it out, though I think her voice is insanely annoying to listen to, and so you may do so at your own discretion. Seriously, if you're going to have someone review a video, it normally helps if they have a decent speaking voice. I'm not trying to be petty, I'm saying GameStop, this is actually a big deal when you're doing video reviews and there are voiceovers. And yes, I'm telling GameSpot how to do reviews because they clearly don't know how to do them here. When you can't do a review for a game that's about social commentary and satire, and you can't keep your mouth open not even half a minute before you start spouting off about feminism, maybe this isn't the line of work for you. Maybe if you have difficulty separating your political opinions and your personal agendas and ideologies from what is supposed to be as an objective of, as possible review of a video game, maybe you are in the wrong line of work. And then Carolyn rounds it off by giving it a 9 out of 10, because, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect game, right? Would you like to see how the GameSpot readership responded to this very fair review? Translation. Would you like for me to show you some cherry-picked examples that I took out of the massive response that this video got and use them to push what I believe people are really thinking? Because that's what I'm about to do. This is going to get really depressing, by the way. So just strap this. Did we give the straps to them before? The no, okay. All right. Blaster Man Forever said, You dropped the ball and- Blah blah blah, I found one angry guy and that means that the way that blah 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 because my feminism and because people are sexist against women. There, I saved you minutes of your life. Use them to donate to my Patreon. I appreciate your generosity. In any event, what Paul does here is he takes a couple examples of nasty comments. One of them was actually satirical and he didn't notice it because Paul is not intelligent. Which, of course, doesn't mean anything because I can cherry-pick examples, too, of anything I want, and I can get the results I want, depending on what I want to tell people. Yes, some people were overly nasty and awful to Carolyn and GameSpot in their responses, and obviously that's not cool, but 
when you have hundreds of thousands of people looking at something, and that something is garbage, like this review is, you are going to get some people who are a, are a bit overly passionate. But, welcome to the internet. Fuck GameSpot, now. I had to cut thousands of comments out because these three were the least offensive. I don't believe you, either about the thousands that you cut out or that these were the least offensive. What's depressing is they started as, 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 as aggressive attacks on Carolyn for critiquing a game, which is funny, because she's a game critic, and that's her job. Well, you know what isn't funny, Paul? You. You know what else isn't funny as well? Lying to people. Being disingenuous. Being a little rat. You are willingly standing in front of a group of people who probably, on my estimation, do not know much about video games, video game culture, or video games, really anything about them, and you're telling them that the reason they are going after her is because she was critical of the game. And that is wrong, Paul. You are just looking at these people in the face, and you're lying to them. You said yourself you had to go through thousands of comments. Which is really weird, because if you had actually done that, then you would know the real gripe that people had. You know damn well why people were upset with GameStop, why they were pissed at Carolyn because of this review. I don't particularly think you're rather intelligent, but I know you're smart enough to understand things when you see them. People didn't like your video, and people don't like the GameSpot video, and people don't like the article, People don't like the review because the reviewer has compromised their ability to write an objectively accurate review. Carolyn was unable to keep her political, social opinions away from the review of Grand Theft Auto V. She had to butt it in. She had to wedge it into the game. Carolyn had to take my feminism and shoehorn that in into a review that is supposed to be as objective as possible. And in doing so, what everyone saw was that Carolyn doesn't understand a lot of things, like social commentary, satire, you know, the basic formula for the game that she's attempting to do a review on. Grand Theft Auto makes fun of everybody. It blows up tropes, it's hyperbolic, it's satirical. Oh, but if you make fun of a woman, or make fun of a stereotype of a woman, or when you make fun of something that I don't like, now it's a problem. And not only is it a problem, I'm going to put in the review that it is a problem with this game, and it's what's wrong with the game, and I'm going to dock points from my review of this game, because I feel a certain way about this issue. That is the blatantly overt, palpable, recognizable, self-evident, explicit, undisguised, unsubtle, transparent, glaring, indisputable can of worms that people had with this article. I know this video is old. I know the review is old. But it's new to me, and that's what matters. But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that from day one, from 30 seconds from when she starts opening her mouth, people had an issue. People had a problem. But you want to stand up here on that stage looking like an absolute imbecile and tell these people that the reason they didn't like the review is because she just made a criticism of the game. Disgustingly disingenuous, Paul, and you should be ashamed of yourself for even having the gall to tell people that. And how dare you knowingly misrepresent what people's problems are in order to push your personal agenda to people. Then it sort of snowballed into hatred for women, and then, you see that her there? Carolyn Petit is transgendered, and Carolyn received a multitude of actual death threats and a petition online to get her fired. Obviously, it is a very tiny minority of people who interacted with this article had that to say, but hey, if you want to focus on the dumb shit that a couple people did, go for it, yeah. Here it is. This is the petition on change.org to fire Carolyn Pettit. You might notice something here. Now this should be glaringly obvious from anybody who first looks at this image. 69 supporters. 69. 69 people signed this petition. Just 69. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views spread across GameSpot, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and they only got 69 people to sign this petition. And you know what's even crazier? There was a counter petition on change.org as well. GameSpot staff do not fire Carolyn Pettit. 64 supporters. 
64. So practically the same amount of people made a counter petition to the tiny one that was made to fire her. But you don't seem to be mentioning that. You're, you're, you're not going to mention that, are you? You're not going to mention the fact that there was an opposition to the ridiculous idea that she should be fired. I don't want her to be fired. I think she did a shit job, and she's potentially really shitty at her job. But that doesn't mean I want people to be fired. I didn't even want Manvir Iyer to be fired. You don't attack people's jobs. You don't attack people's incomes or livelihood. That's something that they do, not us. But you don't mention this, Paul. You think this would be a glaring endorsement of the community of gamers here. But you don't mention it. It doesn't pop up at all in your talk. You don't, you don't discuss it. You don't bring it up. This doesn't fit my narrative. There was a direct voluntary counter to the shitty things that some people did and signed. But that would make gamers look good. And I can't mention that in this talk, can I? I have to tell the world how sexist gamers are. I gotta tell them how sexist Grand Theft Auto is. That's kind of an underhanded response, right? Yeah, you would know a lot about being underhanded, Paul, wouldn't you? So GameSpot, what they did is they did this massive video rebuttal and they literally looked down the camera and said, we are ashamed of you people and we don't want to be affiliated with you anymore. If more game uh, critic publications did this, the world would be a, not a far better place, but a moderately better place. You know, that's fine. GameSpot can make a video defending their, their reviewers despite how shitty of a job they did, despite their inability to make objectively factual reviews, not push personal politics and their personal agendas and their personal fee-fees. Fine, they can do that. But I think it's weird they didn't call her out for that. I think it's weird that just like you, they looked at the response and said, you know what, there's an extremely legitimate base to pretty much what everyone's saying here, we're not gonna address that. We're gonna pick the we're gonna pick the things that we don't like and virtue signal how good we are for standing up for our people. Uh, so now on to part five in which I dip my toe in for MMGN. Also, some reasons as to why GTA 5 is actually objectively sexist. Probably should have put a full stop there instead of an exclamation mark. Now it feels like you're making light of things. Paul, why are you reading this out loud? Stop it, stop it, seriously you're doing a TEDx talk. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, Paul, maybe if you spent less time trying to come up with stupid jokes in a slideshow, typing out words thinking you're clever, and maybe allocated that time to, I don't know, doing research, finding out what the opposing opinion had as a grief, trying to learn, try to better yourself through knowledge, maybe this video would be more well received. Maybe I wouldn't have had to make this video here. Maybe, 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 Paul, there is a moral in here, somewhere, buried deep beneath all of the excrement. Uh, amongst other things, I'm a video game critic for a publication called The Vine, but I also write for MMGN. And I Gosh, what a ringing endorsement of those places. God, let me go to Chrome right now and visit those places. Gosh, Paul, what's his face is there? He's been so, he's been so stalwart in his defense of the truth. I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say on these, on these places. I played the game and I agreed with GameSpot, like 100%. And I thought, what's the harm? I'm a dude, I'm safe from criticism. What an idiotic thought to inhabit my actual idiot head. Yeah, that's the thing, Paul. Nothing is immune from criticism. Nothing. Literally nothing. Literally, literally, literally nothing. Not a single thing. Not you, not Carolyn, not a man, not a woman, not an ideology. Nothing. Why you would have that thought is a little strange, I agree. So I wrote a piece in which I gently suggested the game might be sexist, and I copped swathes of abuse, and again, nothing compared to what women who were writing about the topic far better than I was, incidentally, copped, and... No, 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 no. No, Paul, you say they're writing better about it. To you, their shitty arguments, to you, their lack of research, to you, their cluelessness looks like magnum opus level material. To you, it looks magnificent. To normal people, to gamers, people who are concerned about the truth, they look even worse. Their arguments are awful. And when these people fling their shit, they get it flung back. Now, she doesn't bring in the clicks like she used to do, but we all know Anita Sarkeesian, Feminist Frequency, that bollocks. Their videos are some of the most poorly researched, transparently ideological that exist on the subject.
I'm sure you would consider them a masterpiece, Paul. Because to you, the magnificence of a point of view is not determined by its objective basis in reality, but in the candor of the zeal coming from it. They can articulate their point better than I can, which means their work is even better than mine is, even though theirs is more factually bankrupt. At this point, we've gone, yeah, the game's sexist. But yeah, I can make claims too. I got a 10-inch cock. How true is it? Well, wouldn't you like to know? Let's look at the game, why the game is actually sexist academically. First up, reason one, three male leads. Now I'm sorry, Paul, but have you gone off the deep end? What am I listening to? What is this? Are you a parody? Is this a joke? Are there cameras? Am I on TV? The game has three male protagonists. Because the, the game creators, Rockstar, wanted to tell the stories of three men. I mean, look, the protagonists of Grand Theft Auto V, they're not good people. They are not good. These are terrible, terrible people, and we should never wish to emulate every facet of these people, all right? Which is part of the reason why the story is so interesting, because you have, let's see, Franklin. Franklin's story is really interesting, because he's tied between success and friendships and where he's from, and it's really important to him. We see that in his personality. We have Michael, who is this criminal, but he cares about his family, but he'll do anything if it, it, it's, it's complicated. I'm not going to get into it. Other people have done better synopses than I can. Especially with the time allotment. I've been ranting for so long about this video. This video is going to be 10 hours long. I don't give a fuck. But these are not good people. We should not strive to emulate the overall actions of the protagonists of Grand Theft Auto V. They steal. They kill. They, they do horrible things. They are not portrayed as good people. They're not moral people. They are stereotyped in a way that is very negative. But if this game is sexist, academically, as you say, because the three protagonists are male, then I assume that Tomb Raider is sexist as well, against men. Brianna Wu's game, Revolution 60, protagonists are female. Well, herp to damn do, it must be sexist against men. Witcher 3, you can only play as a white male, the worst of them all. Sexist and racist. Name one game where you can play as a giraffe. I can't. That's like double racist. You, you know how ridiculous this is to say, to record, as I sit here in my house. It's fucking retarded. Because to say that Grand Theft Auto is sexist just on the idea that you have three protagonists and they're all male... I mean... No more commentary, let's proceed. Now... In my mind, and I'm aware I'm stepping into very... Uh, very sketchy territory here. In my mind, feminism is not about elevating women above men, it's about equality and taking people based on the merits of who they are as people, yeah? Holy shit, but just a second, just a, just a second ago, you said that the game was sexist because the protagonists are all male. What, what happened to, what happened to judging people based on their merits? I don't, don't, when you were reading through the script, did you not go, oh wait a second, I contradict myself in consecutive sentences. Answer? No, there is not. There's no way this guy used a script. Yeah. No, 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 fuck. Feminism is not about equality of the genders. It hasn't been for ages. It's about the elevation of the female over the male. Feminism. That's why it's not called egalitarianism. egalitarianism. I mean, look, just look at the word. Feminism. Femin. If it's about equality, why does it start with fem? It is a question one should ask. Oh yeah, he said it. Did you hear? You heard him said it, Myrtle. He 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 told everyone what feminism really is, like back in the old days when we were burning our bras so we could vote. No, sorry, fuck that bullshit. It doesn't fly. You can point to definitions all day. Reality does not agree with your definition. If we're talking about equality, you better on that same damn stage get rid of all of the privileges that women have in society because they have a vagina, things like affirmative action and the what like. Because well, I mean, after all, it's about equality, right? You better sign them up for the draft too. Oh, no, no, when we say equality, when we say equality, we meant the good bits. No one ever advocates for more female garbage men. Yeah, there aren't enough women dying in foxholes halfway across the country. We need more women CEOs. That's what, that's what society really needs. That, that's what equality really is. Going back to Grand Theft Auto, fuck, this is gonna be a long-ass video. Going back to Grand Theft Auto, though, Grand Theft Auto treats everybody like shit. You're a nasty, terrible, horrible human being, no matter who you play as. You kill men, you kill women, basically indiscriminately. You kill anybody. So even though, yeah, the majority of people that you kill, especially narrative-wise, will be men. Thugs, gangs, bikers, you name it, you kill them. Cops, FBI, police, civilians, most of the people you kill in this game will be men. 
Hell, the vast majority of people that you kill in video games are men. I would say close to 90-something percent of all the people that you kill in video games are men. Every Nazi, every Russian, every communist, every gang member, every thug, every biker, every everything. All men. Oh, but feminism is about equality, right? Well, feminism is about equality. That's why I'm bitching that Grand Theft Auto, a game where you could do terrible things to every gender as much as you want, is sexist. Because it's okay when you do it to men. But if you negatively portray a stereotype women have, or if you do anything that's violent or bad to a woman, well, that's terrible. When you do it to a man, well, I mean, come on. Patriarchal piece of shit probably had it coming, right? Probably spreading his legs on the subway a bit too much. I bet he was standing up while he was urinating a bit too often for my tastes. Or how they have to register in the draft and maybe get shipped to the other side of the goddamn planet to get blown to smithereens and die in the mud. Because it's okay when it happens to men. Nobody bats a fucking eyelid. But when it happens to women, it is a catastrophe. It is sexism. It is misogyny. And that is not equality in my book. So, if the male characters are good, it shouldn't matter what gender they are. It would be nice if they're female, and I'll talk more about that in a second, but- No, Paul. No. No. You have to pick a side. You can't- you can't- it's okay to straddle the fence sometimes. You can't jump across it back and forth between sentences. You have to decide. Does it matter if they have a penis? Or does it matter what kind of person, what kind of character they are? You can't keep flip-flopping every other sentence. Decide which one it is. Be consistent. It shouldn't matter. So this is not a deal breaker, but it gets far, far more depressing. Yeah, more depressing, because having three protagonists who are male to choose from, that's depressing. Reason two, posters. Now, I was in Los Angeles fairly recently, and entire buildings were painted to look like the posters of this game. And the four main posters put in every capital city basically depicted, there was one for each of the three male leads, and there was one for this character. Uh, yeah, she's hot. She's attractive. That's marketing. She's alluring. Who's this character, you might be thinking? She's not in the game! <laughs> she, they literally cre they've hired a model, Shelby Wellender. I've contacted her, she's lovely. But yes, that's, that's why they hired her, because she's gorgeous. They contacted a model, and they basically created a character specifically for this chestal area right here. Yeah, this is just basic marketing, Paul. Uh, no one thinks lesser of her as a person for this. Rockstar is trying to sell the game to men. That's their biggest demographic. Men, despite what you might put out there about 47% of women being gamers, the people who play Grand Theft Auto, it's not 47% women. They are marketing to the demographics. Sex sells, whether you like it or not. That's a biological reality. We're attracted to beautiful women. Well, us normal people are, Paul. You probably apologize for it. And it's incredibly cynical and depressing, and it should be transparent, but it did sell a lot of games. That's a reason to be angry about the game. Right, you should be angry about this game, because they gave a woman a lot of money to look attractive as a piece of marketing so that they could get people to buy the game. I mean, some people say it's the torture scene, some people say it's the gratuitous violence, other people say that it's the stereotypical representations of characters. No, 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 this is what... Okay, sure. Reason three, the depiction of women in the game. Now, the depiction of women in the game is not great because they're all either shrill harpies, new age housewives, or prostitutes. Yeah, you want to know what the men are depicted like in the game? I mean, you played the game, right? You've, you've played Grand Theft Auto, right, Paul? You know how the men are depicted in this game. All three, of the, all three of the protagonists are scum. You know that, right? Like, they go out and kill innocent people, indiscriminate slaughter. I mean, I mean, Trevor's just a fucking psychopath. Is the, game, is, is the game hate men because of how it portrays Trevor? Guess what? It's satire. It's social commentary. It's supposed to make fun of stereotypes. It has for, god, 15 whatever years. Everybody's a piece of shit in Grand Theft Auto. They jiggle around and bounce and they have nothing to say and you cannot in any way alter the trajectories, their downward trajectories in the story. Because it's not your story. It's the story of three characters in the video game. It's not about you, it's about them. You're controlling them, you live the experiences, but it's about the stories of Trevor, Michael, and Franklin. There are a lot of male characters in the game who are scum. Some of them die and they're completely innocent. 
but there's nothing you can do to affect their lives as well. Where is your outcry? And these aren't even real people, remember? They're pixels on a screen. But again, terrible things happen to men in this video game. But it's only a problem when it happens to women. Reason four, quests that actively shame women. Now, there are quests in the game where you get on the back of a motorbike with a paparazzi, you chase down female actresses, shame them for having sex on their own private property, and then profit from that. Which is... I really wish there was a bar right here that I could just go over and buy a drink at, but uh, now, let's move on. You know, I remember those missions. Because I played Grand Theft Auto V. I got like 60-something hours into it. Fantastic game. I love it. Loved it. Fantastic game, Grand Theft Auto. And I remember those missions with the paparazzi. In fact, at the end of those missions, you could choose to kill them or not. Spoiler alert for those of you who haven't played Grand Theft Auto yet. They, those, those missions make fun of the paparazzi. They ridicule the paparazzi. They show someone who is obsessive to an unhealthy degree. The paparazzi character in the game, he's a weasel. And the game makes no reservations about saying that. It's making fun of the paparazzi. And at the same time, it makes fun of celebrities. Because guess what? When a woman's having sex on her own private property, she's doing it with a dude, you idiot. There's a man involved. And he is just as angry and upset as she is. But it only matters when it happens to women, doesn't it, Paul? The whole point of those missions is that they are a joke. It's satire. It makes fun of everyone. It makes fun of rich celebrities. It makes fun of the people in the paparazzi who invade their privacy. That's the point. It's telling us how bad it is because you do it, Paul! It's showing us how terrible it is that the paparazzi invade the private lives of people because you see their distress. It's showing us this is a bad thing, Paul! My god, are you really this devoid of self-awareness? I guess in Paul's magical made-up kingdom that he lives in, his version of reality that somehow inhibits the same planet as ours is, he thinks that depiction equals endorsement. Like someone plays these missions where you sneak onto the celebrities' mansions and you try to get pictures of them having sex, and, 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 which is immensely illegal, and it's immoral, and it's a terrible thing to do. I guess he actually thinks this game is encouraging you to do it. Uh, it's, it's gonna get better, I promise. Part 6. What will happen if you get online and claim this game or any others are sexist? Now, at this point you're thinking, yeah, the game's sexist. It's sexist. Yeah, because you're painting it as sexist, Paul. You're not giving people the full story. You're showing everybody how little you understand, but they don't understand. They, you're all that they know about this game for the most part, I'd bet. Of course it looks sexist. Of course, because you framed it as such. In a disingenuous and dishonest way. You should be ashamed of that, Paul. Why don't I get online and say something about it? Well, here's what you're going to experience if that happens. Typical response one. <laughs> that stupid face. Yeah, that stupid face. Up on stage for everyone to see. This is a game, OMG! Why bring sexism or politics or whatever into it, OMG? Well, first of all, you disgusting, wrinkly bastard. It is a game, but for about 10 years now, we've been trying to get video games recognized as an art form. And when you want something to be considered an art form, you need to start looking at it through the prism of politics and race and gender, and that's how things become art. What? what? No. No. I, no. I, no. Paul, what the fuck? Where do you get... No. And people don't have a problem with the political messages in Grand Theft Auto because they're satirical and they're hyperbolic. They have a problem with people looking through the lens of their personal politics in what should be as an objective as possible review for consumers. I've read, literally, again, death threats against Roger Ebert, who claimed over a long period uh, that video games weren't art. And then I went to New York, and I was in MoMA, and I sat there and sat amongst an exhibit of video games as art, and I watched old dudes who hate video games, sit there and take them seriously and treat them like art. We are so close to it. This is kind of a personal beef of mine. No, this whole talk of yours is a personal beef. Don't try to say that just now you're getting personal. But these responses are going to get gross. Typical response too. OMG, but seriously, sexism doesn't matter. Uh, uh, who, who says that? Who says sexism doesn't matter? Who literally goes out there and advocates that sexism is not something that matters in society? Are these people real? Are you strawmanning, Paul? Are these people real? Okay, well, um, young man. Yeah, I mean, God forbid a woman thinks that. That, that, can't, that can never happen, could it? People complain about things that matter to them, yeah? 
So these people will get online and write hundreds and hundreds of pages on message boards about how graphics aren't good enough, or about how there's not enough downloadable content, or- Wait, who, who argues that there's not enough downloadable content for games these days? Paul, what fantasy world do you live in? Or about how you inexplicably can't take your hat off even indoors in Pokemon X and Y. What's that about? But then, that, that's because they care about these things, yeah? Logically, that's because they care about these things. So because they get online and dedicate just as much energy to actively attacking and berating people who claim that games are sexist... Yeah, that's, that's debating. That, that's argument. That's discussion. That's how ideas are treated online. In a public space for everyone to see. If you can't stand people ridiculing your ideology, or making fun of your religion, or you don't think they should be able to, or you just can't fathom the idea that someone else might think differently from you, Paul, then maybe it's not the place for you. Maybe you should go back to church, where there's only one guy up on the pulpit. Logically implies that they are pro-sexism. So just all right. I think you all just heard this, and I think I just heard it too. I'm gonna play this back though, without my interjection, so that we can see everything as it appeared on the TEDx talk. All right. This is important. So because they get online and dedicate just as much energy to actively attacking and berating people who claim that games are sexist, logically implies that they are pro-sexism. So because they get online and dedicate just as much energy to actively attacking and berating people who claim that games are sexist, logically implies that they are pro-sexism. One more time, so it really sinks in. So because they get online and dedicate just as much energy to actively attacking and berating people who claim that games are sexist, logically implies that they are pro-sexism. If you argue against people who say that video games are sexist, that means you are pro-sexism. If you disagree with me, you are sexist. I don't think I'm taking what he's saying out of context. I don't think he's misrepresenting what he's saying. He's saying, if you are arguing against me that video games are sexist, that means that through some somersault of logic, or what I think is logic, you are pro-sexism. People think this, by the way. There are people out there, as you see, who actually believe this. This is something that they hold dear to their hearts. They believe this with every fiber of your being. This guy is saying video games are sexist. He's saying Grand Theft Auto is sexist. And if you disagree, that means you are pro-sexism. That's no different than saying, hey, maybe we should have a discussion as or whether maybe this person wasn't shot by the cops because he was black. Maybe he was shot because, you know, he was attacking the cop. Oh, well, that means that you're racist. That means you're racist. How could you possibly how could you possibly disagree with my opinion? How could you how could you have a different point of view? How could you analyze the facts of the situation differently and arrive to a separate conclusion? You must be a sexist. You must be a racist. And I don't have to tell you all how silly that is. That's something to bear in mind. Aren't people fun? Typical response three. OMG, it's satire. Get over it. Men are just as bad as women in the game. OMG, OMG. They say OMG a lot, basically. Well, no, but you do when you straw man for them. But this is a pretty valid... This is, this is actually a really, really valid response. It has composed a huge component of my response to you, Paul. Why is it bad when women have what is done to them, just what is done to men all the time? Uh, first of all, I have consulted a multitude of comedian friends of mine who have all looked at this as satire and said, no, 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 satire is a scalpel. It's not a blunt instrument, and this is not good satire. Sat Grand Theft Auto is often regarded very highly by society, especially internet society and tech-savvy society, as among the best forms of satire that is done especially Grand Theft Auto V. It is excellent satire. It does it extremely well. So your friends who are comedians are pretty fucking shit comedians if they don't understand this, Paul. If you don't think Grand Theft Auto is good satire, you're, you're, I, I think you're completely wrong. But even if, even, even if you think that, it doesn't really matter, does it? Whether or not it's good satire is one thing. If it's trying to be satire and it's doing it, you know, it's trying to do it satirically, whether you think it's good or not. So that doesn't really change it, does it? You just don't personally like it. Secondly, yeah, the women in the game and the men, they're all monsters, right? But the men get something the women don't. They get agency. Well, just because they're the protagonists, 
And you don't really get that much agency. There's some decisions in the game that you choose from, but for the most part, the, the story will progress and proceed pretty much the same for everybody, with, with a few differences, especially towards the end. But for the most part, like for the most part, the endings will be the same no matter what. Their agency exists only in the sense of you're controlling them as protagonists. It's not because they're men. That has nothing to do with it. They get backstories explaining away why they're monsters. They get quests which actively redeem them as human beings, and they come off more like puckish rogues, whereas the women don't move an inch. Now, part seven. How do we respond to these idiots? You know, Paul, based on your track record so far here, maybe you should let somebody else take the wheel on this section. I mean, just a moment ago, as we highlighted many times, you said if you're arguing against the idea that video games are sexist, you are a sexist. You're pro-sexism. Right? So Paul may be someone who is taking that position, calling somebody with a different opinion a sexist. Maybe that's not a very charitable interpretation of the other person's position. Maybe you shouldn't be the one giving this part of the lecture here. Flipping tables really helps, by the way. But what you don't want to do when flipping a table is be sitting across from someone who's flipping one at the same time, because then the table just goes up and down, nothing happens. Uh, the best response to people like this, and the thing you should be saying to game developers if you ever interact with them, is tell me, using diagrams where appropriate, how putting a character, a female character, with amazing agency and grace and poise and depth in your game would in any way impact what you're trying to achieve in the story. And I don't know what the point of that question would be. We have plenty of games that have strong female protagonists. Horizon Zero Dawn just came out. That's got one. We've got... Oldies but goldies, like Tomb Raider, for instance, Beyond Good and Evil had one. Overwatch has plenty of strong female characters in it as well. Bayonetta just got a release on PC. That's pretty cool. That's a strong, sex-positive female protagonist. I don't know, what, what, would that, what would that achieve, actually? What, what's the point of that question? Then you just watch them fumble around and suffer a cerebral hemorrhage. Because basically, you can't dispute that. GTA V is a good game, but it would have been great with female characters in there. See, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. See, this is exactly what I mean. Paul just said that Grand Theft Auto V is a good game, but it would be a great game if one of the protagonists had a vagina. But then he says feminism is just about equality. It's not about elevating one over the other, even though the game would be objectively better if someone had a vagina and was a woman in it. Which one is it, Paul? Which one is it? Is feminism about equality, or is it about judging people based on their merits? Well, hey, maybe we can get around this if we say that having a vagina is a merit. Then you could have it all in the argument. There you go, feminists. I just gave you an out for the stupid arguments that you make. You know, just women and girls and anything. It would have been absolutely magical. But it's just, it's making me really angry. And the fact is that people are growing up with fictional characters, and people inhale fictional characters at a rate of knots. It's really important for young girls and boys to have fictional role models as well as, you know, real ones. Is that why feminists, when they talk about putting female protagonists, especially in video games, they are so against the idea of these characters being portrayed in a realistic way, where they have vulnerability, character flaws, where they're human beings? And if they grow up looking at people from, like, from GTA V, they grow up into monsters. But if you grow up, like, there's so many games with amazingly written female characters. You, you just, you just, sorry, sorry, you just made the offhand comment that if people grow up playing characters like the protagonists from Grand Theft Auto, you actually turn into a monster. I mean, I'm just saying, he, he just made that offhand comment. I mean, it, I know he kind of slipped it in and did, it didn't really elaborate on it. I'm just saying, that's just something he said, by the way. Lara Croft in the new Tomb Raider game. Um, Alex Vance from Half-Life 2. I had the maddest crush on her when I was growing up. That's not very feminist of you. Um, El Did I get a woo for that? All right, nice. Uh, Ellie from The Last of Us, she's very recent. Uh, Professor Liara Tassoni from Mass Effect. And then people say, okay, how about Princess Zelda? She's a female character, but she's a damsel, so she doesn't count. R wait, wait, who, who is saying that, Paul? Who? Wrong, she totally does count. Princess Zelda sits back and manipulates the mute, useless hero around the environment like a chess piece. I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't call Link useless. He does a lot of useful things like, you know, dispelling forces of darkness, saving kingdoms, rescuing people. Those are, those are useful things, I believe. I could be mistaken. And when Link can't achieve anything on his own, she dresses up at night as a badass character called Sheik, and then she sneaks out and kills the people he can't deal with, and then comes back. She's basically the Cersei Lannister of video games, is what I'm saying. I have nothing to say regarding Sheik and the Lannisters. 
I just want to say something here so that um, TED Talks doesn't claim this video for the fourth damn time. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, we're all pretty depressed, but how do we fix this? There is no problem. It does not need fixing. Yes, that is the Little Rascals. I'll be addressing that in a moment. Knowing you, I'm prepared for you to say something along the lines of Little Rascals uh, encourages kids to engage in toxic masculinity. Here's the thing about that 47%. When you go out and say to gamers, 47% of uh, gamers are women, what you're going to get is, yeah, but they're not playing real games. There is a lot of merit to that argument. You've just presented it very poorly because you're trying to push a narrative. You're going to hear that claim and it's going to make you angry. Feel free to punch those people in their stupid faces, by the way. What if it's a girl, Paul? What if it's a girl who makes that argument? What if it's a girl that says, those girls over there who don't play hardcore games like I do, who, who's not a part of gamer culture like I am? What, what if she makes that argument? Is it still okay to punch her in the face, Paul? Because feminism is about equality and all. I mean, you'd think a feminist would say, you know, because everything's about equality, that you shouldn't punch anybody based on things that they say or the opinions they hold. That's just me. What do I know? But, but, oh, okay. So, what you need to do then is address the fact that, look, Nintendo are very good at uh, being inclusive and getting, you know, women and men playing. Uh, mobile gaming and the indie gaming scene, that's where most women are playing their games. That's because for the past decade, these developers and these particular companies have been trying actively to include women. Yeah, but there's a difference between including women and shoehorning them in. You can include women in video games, yeah, sure. But we've had what? We've had Zelda and Sheik for a long time. We've had Tomb Raider for ages. We've had Beyond Good and Evil and Half-Life 2. Those have been around for a long time. So what changed? What really changed, Paul? Was it the attempt to politicize everything that happens? Or the fact that a lot of the times these inclusions were done in a way that wasn't uh, something that felt natural or real? It was just done to tick off a box. You don't have to exclude them. That's why they're playing them, because the door is open. Try no, Paul. And it's awfully, it, it's awfully sexist of you to imply that women won't get into gaming unless they see female protagonists. Because the door has always been open to them. Video games are perhaps the ultimate meritocracy, and that's why they can be enjoyed by anybody, regardless of their gender, or their race, or their religion, or their nationality. The door was always open for women. Try and think of the game development industry as a big clubhouse with boys only written on the front, right? Yeah, but that, that wouldn't be true. Uh, that, yeah, you can think of it like that, but that would be completely wrong, Paul. There's no sign out front that says boys only. There never has been, Paul. Women, in terms of just basic general numbers, don't get into gamer culture as much as men do. But they are absolutely welcome to. No one is stopping them. Hell, if more chicks showed up, that'd be fine with me. If you put pink bows and stickers on something, it will attract more little girls. If you put race cars and superheroes, it will attract more little boys. So why do you keep treating... Well, why do you keep wanting to treat these women as little girls? Who think you have to wave something in front of their face like that to get them interested? Why can't you let them make the decisions they want to make? Oh yeah, because it's not a, dis a decision that you want to see. Isn't that right, Paul? You want them to make the decisions that y you want them to make. And if they want to do something besides video games, then well, we can't have that. We have to try harder to steer them a certain way. Like they're chattel and not human beings with, what was it you said? Agency? I think of the game development industry as a big clubhouse with boys only written on the front, right? And there's a couple of dudes sitting in the corner, hunkering away, shaking their fists at the stupid smelly girls. You don't smell, by the way. You smell great. Uh, well, I mean, you should still... You should, not always, no. Um, and then one of them goes to the bathroom, and he looks out, and suddenly he realizes there's, there's girls in the house, and they've been there for a while, and they've invited their friends in, and suddenly the air smells fresher, and... Uh, women don't naturally smell but I... Have you been around a woman? Y you know, like, if they don't bathe and stuff, they'll, they'll smell bad just like everyone else, right? Like, you know, women are just like men in the way that they can be capable of laziness. You know, guys are slobs and women are neat freaks. I mean, I... 
and the architecture is different, and everything just looks and feels nicer, and it's a really positive environment. But a few dudes are still in that corner room just scowling and pushing girls over and rubbing their faces in the dirt and pulling their hair, which typically... You know, I, I didn't really know when to stop, because this is just a really shitty analogy on a lot of different levels. I, this video is long enough. I think it's pretty self-evident that this doesn't match up at all with the games industry. It's a sign that they're into you, by the way. But here's what I'd like to say to those stupid, smelly boys. There are new rules on the clubhouse wall now, and it's time to grow up. Really, Paul? You're telling people to grow up? Didn't you say to punch people if they disagree with you? Didn't you tell people they were sexist if they wanted to argue with you? Didn't you tell- didn't you make some sort of punch in the dick reference? Look, I know there are times where I'm not mature at all, but that's fine, because I make YouTube videos. I'm not standing up in front of a bunch of people trying to change their minds face to face on what at least I believe to be an extremely serious issue. There are times and places where you could flip it on and off, which I do. That's why I have a successful life. I don't behave the same at my job as I do as I sit here on the computer as I do when I'm in bed with somebody. There are different times and places to have different attitudes and outlooks and mannerisms in the way that you carry yourself. I understand, Paul, you're trying to appear hip and cool with your... your your weird shoes, which you have your pants tucked into the shoes, and your suspenders in addition to a belt that are hanging on the sides of your pants, and your pants, which are quite skinny, and then we go up north, and then you have your buttons buttoned, but you have no tie. I mean, really, it's the suspenders that get to me. I mean, what is your belt doing? Your belt's doing all the work, your suspenders are just hanging there. That seems impractical, like they get caught on things or get in the way of you accessing your pockets. And they would just be flailing around, and you'd try to get in your car, and he'd close the door behind you, and then you would get those caught in the door. And I, why, why do you have those? Is this a thing that people do? Look, let's. We've been here a long time. It's been a long video. It's been a long time coming. I know this video's old. It's a couple of years old. But the points still stand to this day. It's still a relevant video. We can still learn a lot from this display of awfulness. Paul has given us a fantastic insight into the attitudes that many of these people have. They want to take something that we love and they want to change it to fit their agendas. They want to fight dragons that don't exist. They're jumping at a ghost in a dream. But there are people out there who sincerely believe that if you take the opposing stance to them, if you have the gall to say, to just to argue against the idea that video games are sexist, that it makes you pro-sexism, that it makes you asexist yourself, there are people who believe this. This audience believes him. He is talking to an audience who doesn't know what a sandbox game is. These are probably not people who know anything about gaming, really other than what Paul is trying to tell them. It's propaganda. He's trying to push an agenda. He's being dishonest. And it is important for us, for you and I, to take instances of this happening and illuminate them for the world to see. I love this hobby. I want to protect the people who play and enjoy this hobby. I want to protect the developers who make the games that we enjoy. And this is one of the ways that I do that. They say sunlight is the best disinfectant. In any event, thank you very much for watching all the way through. I finally go part-time next week. And due to the immense, immense generosity of my patrons and those who give to me in streams, I mean, I... This is going to be something I do a lot more often, because I'll have more time to devote to it. I'm still trying to figure out, and I have your names, those of you who are generous beyond measure, generous beyond words, generous beyond what I can express. I have your names. I know who you are. And you know who you are when I look at you in a metaphysical sort of sense, and I say thank you. Because I'm still kind of at a loss because your generosity has been so great. You've been, you've been magnanimous to a degree that I just have trouble putting into words. If you like this video, leave a comment below. I value comments more than I like likes and dislikes. Leave those too, though. If you want to support me, then I have a Patreon link in the description. Or send a comment my way. Send it to me on Discord or my email or on my Twitter. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much, so very, very much for supporting me with your continued viewership with your donations with your patronage it means a lot to me it really does i'm going to come up with something special even if it's just me putting out more stuff more quickly maybe getting a little experimental mm, aren't i curious 
Have a lovely and jubbly Easter. Thank you very much.